Hello, welcome to another episode of Snail Mail with Smokey. I hope that you're having a great day wherever you're at. Here in Wisconsin, the sun is shining, the temperatures are warm. I'm excited about being outside this weekend. Going to be uh, 70 something degrees Fahrenheit uh, this weekend. So I am really enthusiastic about getting outside and be able to work in the yard and do things like that. But you're not watching this video to talk about the weather in Wisconsin. You're watching this video because we're going to talk about stamps. So in today's video, I want to show you more of the collection that I purchased at the end of 2023. Like I said, I purchased it from a lady uh, who is local and uh, it was actually her mother's collection. Her mother had passed away several years ago. And uh, so I was very pleased uh, to be able to purchase this collection. So I've been going through it, uh, mainly just getting a really good overview of everything in the collection and uh, trying to make some, some decisions uh, about what to do with it uh, as a whole, what to do with various stamps and items. And so I want to show you now part of that collection. And then when we come back, uh, I'm going to ask you to help me with something. So stay tuned. Let's, uh, let's go over the work desk and look at some stamps. All right, here we are at my work table. And I want to share with you uh, some things from the stamp collection that I bought. Uh, at the end of last year and I came across some very interesting things uh, this section appears to be all uh, full or mostly full sheets of US stamps and mint never hinged condition here is a Christmas stamp a 15 cent stamp and then look at this issue uh, this has a little write-up about it at top it says uh, Frances Perkins, Secretary of Labor under Franklin Roosevelt, and the first woman cabinet member uh, to be issued April 10th, 1980 in Washington, D.C. So that information is exactly correct. Uh, this stamp is Scott number 1821, and it was issued by the United States Postal Service on April 10th, 1980. And so you can see we have two different strips of stamps here. Each, stamp, uh, each strip consisting of 10 stamps. Then we turn the page and we find this sheet of postage stamps. Uh, and there's another little write-up about it. Let me move the camera. There's a little write-up about it from a newspaper right here. And this write-up, six special postage stamps will be issued February 25th at the Library of Congress to mark National Letter Writing Week. The 15 cent stamps will come in pairs, each consisting of a large and a small. The bigger stamp will bear the message, uh, letters lift spirits, letters preserve memories, and letters shape opinions. Each of the smaller stamps will say PS right soon. And so you see that here are the, the larger stamps, and then underneath them are the smaller stamps that say PS right soon. These were issued for National Leather Writing Week on February 25th, 1980. They are Scott numbers 1805 through 1810. Here we have another, looks like half sheet of stamps, booklet of stamps, uh, both with write-ups, very nice. Another section and another section with write-ups. And then here is another uh, another section of stamps and another article. And this is uh, from a uh, from an article called Stamps in the News. And so very nice. And let me turn this around and you can see uh, these stamps here. This is a stamp of Emily Bischel. It is Scott number 1823 issued on May 31st, 19. 80 uh, and it says the main design of this stamp features a photograph of Miss Bischel to the right of the portrait appears the double barred red cross symbol of the international TB uh, organizations her name Emily Bischel appears on the line beneath the photo followed by crusader 
against tuberculosis and US 15 cents. Uh, the vertically oriented stamp is the standard commemorative size. And then it says Bishel was born in Wilmington in 1861 and resided in Delaware all of her life. She was instrumental in putting through the first child labor law in Delaware in 1913. Uh, she read an article about a Christmas seal campaign in Denmark and designed a simple seal consisting of a holly wreath, a red cross, and the words Merry Christmas. One year later, her idea became a reality and a drive was launched nationally, sponsored jointly by the American Red Cross and the National Tuberculosis Association. In 1919, the association became the sole messenger of the Christmas seal campaign. And in 1920, the double barred Lorraine cross became the official emblem. The association is now called the American Lung Association and is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. So I'm reading uh, from this article here. And I love that, uh, that the collector I bought this from included all these articles. It makes it really easy for stamp research and, uh, and that kind of thing. And a very interesting story here about the beginnings, really, of the Easter Seals. And then next is uh, this sheet of stamps. This is Scott number 1826, was issued in July 23rd, 1980. Uh, so a very nice set of stamps. And then you see all throughout these pages of the album are filled with, like I said, what appears to be, and look at the back of these, uh, full sheets are mostly full sheets of stamps issued by the United States Postal Service in, uh, in 1980. So really lots of work, I think, went into this and into uh, matching these articles. And I'm going to try to find out of what newspaper these articles came from. But matching these articles uh, that talked about the stamp releases uh, with the sheet or pane of stamps. So let's get back into the office and uh, we'll finish up. And you're going to help me uh, make a pretty big decision here in just a second. See you in a minute. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at those sheets and partial sheets of U.S. stamps. I know that I have really enjoyed going through that uh, album that is in the in the couple boxes of the collection that I purchased. So I said that I was going to ask you for some help. Uh, so here it goes. I've really been racking my brain trying to figure out what do I do with these full sheets and partial sheets of U.S. stamps. Now, they are not rare stamps. They are not uncommon stamps. They were uh, printed in the thousands and hundreds of thousands. Um, so they're readily available. You can find these stamps. They're not old by any means. Um, they were, most of them issued in 1980, a year or two before, maybe a year or two after. So we're talking the last, you know, 40 to 45 years these stamps were issued. So I'm not real sure what I should do with them in my collection. I'm not one that collect uh, lots of full sheets of stamps. I have a couple uh, that I've shown you on this channel that I've purchased. I purchased a full sheet of uh, stamps featuring my home state of Oklahoma and also a full sheet of stamps featuring my new adoptive state of Wisconsin. Um, but I'm not really one to I don't know, collect full sheets of stamps. And so I don't know what to do with them. Uh, so I'm really asking for your opinion. What do you think I should do with these stamps? Let me tell you the options that I've come up with so far. Uh, the first option is to transfer them into some new uh, album pages and then just create an album of full sheets of U.S. stamps and uh, add that album to my collection. Uh, my second option is to pass them on uh, to another collector who will appreciate them. Uh, like I said, these are rel relatively available stamps. You can find full sheets of these stamps uh, online for sale pretty easy. They, uh, 
they're not uh, they're not expensive. They're not uh, they're not terribly valuable. And and you know I don't collect for the value. That's not something that uh, that concerns me. I collect stamps because I like stamps. Um, so do I do that? Do I do I try to pass them on to another collector who I know is going to value them and appreciate them and uh, and be pleased to have them in their collection? Or uh, my third option, and, and please, uh, please, please hear me out on this. Uh, do I use them for postage? Uh, and and let me let me specify what I mean for that. I uh, I go online currently and I buy mint U.S. stamps, a lot of three cent, four cent, five cent stamps, and uh, and I buy them. I buy lots of fifty or a hundred. And, and I buy them for the sole purpose of putting on postage, to put on postcards that I send through Post Crossing and Pen Pals and correspondence uh, to fellow stamp collectors and philatelists who like to see a variety of stamps on their cards and envelopes. Uh, and I've done that ever since I began Post Crossing. Um, I've done that, and it's something that I enjoy doing. And, and when I do that, I always make sure that it is a stamp that is relative or that is available that there are many, many uh, prints of. Uh, it's not a rare stamp or, or anything like that. So part of my thought process is I could use these sheets and add them to postage uh, so they would serve the intended purpose for which were your, they were designed. After all, a postage stamp is a receipt. You pay for a service and that stamp is your receipt saying that that service is going to be completed. You enter a contract in with your post office. And uh, and so a postage stamp hasn't fully served its purpose until it's made its journey through the postal system. So I'm wondering, yes, 45 years late in some cases for these stamps to make their journey, but should I do that? Uh, should I break these up and send them on their way? Now, I know some of you are going to go, no way, don't do it, no whatsoever. And I respect that and I understand that. Um, it's just one of the options I've come up with. So here's what I'd like you to do. Leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what you think I ought to do. Uh, like I said, I've got three options. I can uh, begin a brand new collection, uh, rehouse uh, these sheets of stamps and some better binders, and stock books and, and, and stock sheets. I can try to, to, to pass them on to other, to other collectors who are more into full sheets of U.S. stamps than I am. Or I can take them and break them up and add them to outgoing postage and brighten the day of uh, friends and post crossers all around the world. Um, not an easy choice, which is why I'm reaching out to you. Uh, so please let me know what you think. And uh, hey, I've come up with three options. If you've got a fourth, let me know. Uh, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, really a dome scratcher here as to what to do. So let me know what you think. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And like I said, leave me a positive comment. Uh, thank each of you for taking time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And until I see you next time, bye-bye.